All right, these are some of the tools that we use to understand the weather, and many of them are for observation. Some of them are for prediction. We'll take a look at that. And so here we go. This is the first tool that I use. It's the most important but most simple tool. It's a thermometer, and it measures the temperature. The hotter it is, the more over to this side it goes. The colder it is, the more over to this side it goes. I've been in temperatures down to about minus 18 before. Uh, I'm from Illinois, so that's how that happened. And then I've been up to temperatures about 106. And then, uh, so the hotter it is, of course, we tell people, hey, you know, you may have to wear shorts today, or maybe it's super cold outside. You need to wear gear. And so it, this tool allows me to help you to know what to expect when you go outside. This is the next tool that we have. This is the rain gauge. Rain gauge is very simple. The raindrops plop on the top. That's it. It's calibrated. And so maybe it rains two inches. You dump it out. You get another read the next day, an inch, and then you add it up. Weather watches do that for me. That's also a very important job. This one, not on right now, but a very important as it is the barometer. Barometer measures pressure. Pressure goes up, the number goes up, pressure goes down, this drops. When you have high pressure, you get happy weather and sunshine, and then when it goes down, you get bad weather, rain showers, thunderstorms, and then tornadoes and hurricanes are extreme areas of low pressure. So this will drop and you'll know that a storm system's coming. Now when the storms do come, then we use these instruments to try and figure out the wind uh, this one is the weather vane, just moves in the direction the wind's blowing, it's that simple. This one's a little more complicated though, this is the anemometer that measures the wind speed. Storm chasers put these on top of their vehicles and drive out to the storms and measure the winds. And so you can actually measure it by uh, counting the number of times the green cup goes around in a circle, measure it by a number in a minute, and uh, you'll get the wind speed. Of course, we have ones that are electronic that uh, do that for you, and I highly recommend it, because when the wind's really going, it's tough to count that. So this is my electronic anemometer, and this one uh, measures it, especially when you're in a storm. It's very handy to have. This is another instrument. This is called a hygrometer. It measures the humidity and the temperature. And so right now, it's 21%. Uh, it's very dry inside. When it's in the wintertime, usually you do get a lot of dry air inside. And then when it's summertime outside, your air conditioner is running. Usually it's the opposite. It might be a little humid inside your home. Now, this is one last uh, tool that we have. Uh, we don't exactly use this one. This is on loan from the National Weather Service. This is a weather balloon, and it's a giant weather balloon. And so they send these up twice a day to measure all of these things, or many of these things, up high in the sky. Because we can measure what's going on at the surface, but you also have to measure what's going on up here to really get a good idea of the atmosphere. And so those are some of the tools that I use that are physical. Now, I don't usually don't handle these myself. They're electronic instruments usually now, and so they'll send me the information. And so we do have some other instruments that are purely electronic. And so this is one of them. This is our tower cam. This one is up about 300 feet in the air outside our studio. It looks at the sky, looks at the ground, tells me what's going on outside. Now this one is also a very important tool. This one is called a radar. And this one, it, there's radars all over the country. We use the information, shoots a beam of energy out over the sky. That energy bounces off of liquid water in the atmosphere, comes back, tells us information about where the rain's located, how heavy it is, where it's moving to, and how fast it's moving. And we use this to track storms, and we also use it to track tornadoes. So that's very important. Now this is another tool that we use, satellites. Satellites are in space, they look down at the Earth, they can tell us where the clouds are, and we can expand it. We can look across the entire planet and look for uh, possible storms or even hurricanes. We can track weather coming across the country, we can track weather coming across the ocean with those satellites. This is uh, a temperature map, and so, you know, I showed you thermometers. There's thermometers at airports and military installations across the country. We actually can look at it on a map, and so that gives us an idea of what the temperature is across the region. And so uh, this morning, for instance, the temperature started in the 30s, and then they rose into the 50s. So we use satellite radar units, to, or, uh, uh, maps, to try and determine what's going on and show people what's going on. I actually added a little bit of extra information in here, area high pressure, low pressure. We talked about that, a couple of fronts. So this was the map for today, but let me show you one that's got a little better example of what could happen. And so this one, it had high pressure, it had sunshine, quiet weather, but back to the west there was an area of low pressure, and so that moved in, and we had a warm front which brought the warm air up with it, and then a cold front behind it. The cold air rushes in. Usually these warm and cold fronts dance around these areas of low pressure as they move off to the east, and so we get uh, warm ups and cool downs and rain and sometimes if it's cold enough we'll even get some snow on the back side. So we use all these tools to try and tell the weather story for the day and get people prepared for what's coming.